So this one is gonna show how proximity pin works. It's very similar to UV pin, but it provides some additional features. Proximity pin gets its position via closest point on surface from a locator to the original surface. So here we have our animated spin. He's deforming, he's got a little run cycle on him. So for this example, we're going to attach something to his left knee. Now, the way that this works is you don't have to be in your rest position to bind to this surface because the pin UV node is aware of the original geometry. So to help us visualize what we want to do here, we're going to take Sven's shape and he's got this shaper ridge, which on all deforming surfaces, we have a shaper ridge, which is set to intermediate object. I'm going to uncheck that so we can see it and I'm going to template it. And this is just for visualization purposes. So here you can see the rest state of this mesh. Okay. So if we want to create a locator here, we create a locator and you notice I've placed it in front of the rest state of his left knee. So what that will do for us is it will use this location and this distance here to figure out where on the surface to bind and then a new transform will be created over here to follow that knee. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to select the shape to follow and then we're going to select the thing we want to follow it. When it comes to constraint, we're going to go to proximity pin and you can see we've already got these options. So it says, hey, I want to use the existing transform as the input. So this locator that I'm giving it is going to be the input. It's going to create a new locator as the output, which should show up near the knee. And this is the coordinate system mode and the alignment mode. And we're not going to maintain the offset. So it won't maintain this offset. It'll stick to that knee. So if I click apply, now you'll notice that we have a locator stuck to his knee. And I'm going to go and make this bigger so you can see it. We'll do about a size 10 here. There we go. All right. So now we have a size 10 <laughs> our locator there sitting on the knee. Uh, so this is the one that's, that's driving its spine position, and here it is following the left knee. So as I play this, you see it's stuck to the knee. Now what's great about the proximity pin is this rest relationship can be changed. So I can come in here and I can change this over time. I can slide it up and you notice it crawls up his thigh or crawls down his shin, right? So it's using the closest point on surface to rebind this locator. Now we talked a little bit about this offset here. So you notice that this one is right on the surface and this one has an offset. Well, we have the option to maintain that offset as well. And not only that, but we can deal with the translation and orientation offset independently. So, and it's not just an on or an off thing. You can scrub it so you can interpolate the value. So you notice as I take the translation offset from zero to one, when I hit one, it maintains the full offset of this and that maintains it through all the deforming ranges. So now we stay off the surface. So if I grab this and I move him around, you'll notice that that guy is updating his offset on the fly. Okay. The other thing we can do is, is orientation. So if I select these two pins and I say display, transform display, and I say local rotation axes, you'll see that this guy is Z out but he is X out. And the reason he's X out is because the normal axis is X. But if I want to maintain the original orientation, I can scrub orientation out. And now he's maintaining his Z out. And you'll notice as I grab this locator and rotate it all around that he picks up this new alignment. So I can turn that on or off. We can take it partially or completely. So it'll maintain that orientation as it goes. One more advantage of the, or not advantage, this is very similar to UV pen in that it can take in multiple inputs and outputs. So if I, let's blow this one away, the one we created, and I'm going to take him back down to zero, zero, zero. Okay. So let's duplicate him a few times, right? We'll do a few of these. We'll do four locators and I'll position these locators at various points along spin. Okay, so now if I take the spin shape and then I select each one of these locators and I create another proximity pin, you'll notice that we've created these other locators up and down his leg. And I'm going to go ahead and scale these up for us so we can see larger. All right, so now you see that multiple locators have been created. And what's great about it is they have reused the same 
pin proximity node. So I'm gonna clear this. And so they all run through one pin proximity node. So these options, these translational op options, all apply to all of them simultaneously. And that is the proximity pin node.